there was divinity, divinity took on flesh. God came in the flesh. Of course, the background to this goes way back into heaven. You know, they, you know what happened to heaven. Satan was the highest created angel. He had certain responsibilities in heaven. And what was being offered to God, he wanted for himself. And so he committed treason by pulling along a number of angels with him to side with him, promising them all kind of positions when he overthrew God, and they believe. But before I go further, I want to get to, to understand the persuasive powers of Satan, his ability to convince people uh, and to persuade people. Now, Satan is in heaven, so are the angels in heaven. Everybody's there, they see God every day. They knew God, and they knew God as God, that he created them. Nobody had any questions about that. But they got to a point where Satan, you know, Satan began to convince them that he could defeat God. And although they knew that God was God, that he created them, he was almighty, all powerful, yet they were persuaded that this could happen. And this one third of them, one third of them, three out of every nine, sided with Satan. Can you believe it? And you think you're in church and him can't get you to backslide. You have never seen God. You have never seen God. And you think he can't get you to backslide. And those who saw God and knew God as their creator, he got them to backslide, so to speak. You spin enough to around Satan and he's going to get you on this. Precisely. We have Eve down here. She's in the garden. And I don't see her fellowshipping with Adam too much. She's fellowshipping with Satan. She's not fellowshipping with God either. She's fellowshipping with Satan. Every time you see Eve in the book, you see Satan talking. So God is coming to Adam, and Satan is going to, to, this, to, this, to Eve. And eventually, eventually, using his persuasive powers, he got her to compromise the word of God. This is why if you're in church and you hang out with certain influences, don't think you are so strong that you can expose yourself to these influences and you're not going to be brought down. Okay, many people have been, ask Samson. If you think you're strong, check Samson. I don't think you are quite as strong as he was. Right? But again, he hung out with the heathen. And you see what was the end of that. All right, so we're back in, in, in there now. So God told him every tree is good. Just one. Just one. All the trees are yours. But this one, don't trouble this one. And that's the one that they went after. You know. The tree of life was right beside it. The tree of life. They didn't want to eat of that one, which is a good thing. Because if they had eaten the tree of life and then committed sin, they would now have to live that kind of life forever. It's a good thing they didn't eat that one. Because in some situations, death or destruction is a relief. So they ate of the tree. God came into the garden and said, I'm calling Adam, not getting any answer. Not answering. Usually when God called God said, Adam, he'd say, yes, Lord, I, however he called God. But this time, no, there's no answer. He's hiding, just like many people do in church. When you're in church and you're sitting in a hide, you're hiding. That's why you leave the front seat and your own back. You know, you want to get lost in the crowd. Because you think, although nobody knows, you know, you think that everybody can see the state that you're in. Am I talking to somebody? That's why you're hiding. You think everybody knows, although nobody knows. And so you're pulling, you're backsliding, you're pushing towards the back. So Adam is hiding from God. And when finally God caught up with him, he said, Adam, tell me, did you, did you, did you, Adam, 
I told you not to, did you, Adam? His response, that woman, you know, I was in the garden the whole time. And I was okay by myself. I never asked for no woman. And you brought this woman into my space. And this, and, and this wicked woman, this wicked woman caused me to sin. So God said, so let me check the wicked woman. Woman, God is not me. I had no control. Satan came in the garden. So, so the Adamic nature was set in train where people refuse to take responsibility for their actions. And I was pointing to somebody else, blaming somebody else. No matter what anybody tell you, until you set your will to do it, it's not going to happen. People can tell you anything they want to tell you. But until you come into agreement with what they are saying, that ain't, it's not going to happen. So God said, you know something? This is going to happen for what you all did. So, he said, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. This is the serpent. Now remember, he wasn't always flat on his belly now. He stood upright like all of us. He stood up like the rest of us. But God said, this is what you're going to get for what you're doing. Right? <laughs> you're going to be cursed above everything else. And you know, people fear snakes more than everything else. He said, on your belly, you shall go. So he wasn't on his belly. But on your belly, you shall go. Get flat. You're going down. On your belly, you shall go. And you shall eat dust. I'm going to come back to that now. Yeah. You shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. No. The same word seed is used in respect to both of them. And we know the seed of the woman is what? This would be her offsprings. So he's saying between your offsprings and her offspring. I want that to sink in a little bit, you know. Because some of us refuse to be that Satan has children in the earth. We all look alike. We all look alike. We could even be born to the same parents, like Cain and Abel, but they're different fathers. God saying, so the, 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 the seed of God, those who are saved people, born again, and carry the divine nature, they and the unsaved people are never going to have no commonality. They're never going to be in agreement. They're never going to be one. It can't happen. This is why people in church are seeking after relationships with people outside. You are crazy. You are crazy. It can't happen. You have one nature and they have another nature. And we act out our nature. It is plain and simple like that. So Satan says enmity. That's why the church and the world can't get on. They can't. Enmity between them. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his feet. Eh? This prophecy though is in respect to Jesus, this particular one. Is in respect to Jesus. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. Childbirth was going to be rough and painful now. Because of all of this. Uh, in pain, you shall bring forth children. And your desire shall be for your husband. And he shall rule. He shall rule over you. Now remember that even Adam were equal co-laborers in God's garden. But after the fall, things changed. The man now became the ruler of the woman because she was first deceived. But remember, you know, I want to just say it here, but in case it, it slipped me when I'm dealing with this, that we who are Christians have gone back to Eden. Hello? Amen. We have gone back to Eden. And I'm going to explain for the next several weeks what this means. So because we're back in Eden, 
the man don't have no rule over the woman again, you know. If you're back in even, back in there, we go back prior to the curse. So this rule thing don't apply. So many men are misquoting the scripture, you know, and saying that they rule. They don't rule. You don't rule. Because we who have been redeemed have gone back prior to the curse. We're no longer pushing under the curse. So this does not apply. Let me just say that fast in case any man in here gives some little ideas in their head. Let me just say, uh -uh. No, no rule business apply again when you're in church. Right? We have different rules. God already in the rules. I will go back. Do what is now to help me. Not just slave. Right? All right. Now, this is saying that it was never the plan of God for women to give birth in pain. Never. And many Christian women are giving birth and accepting pain as a part of that process. It is not to be accepted. It is not a part of the process for Christian people. And so in the run up to delivery, the prayers should be offered in this way. That it will be a pain free delivery. Right? Because you're back in the garden prior to the curse. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, we are living now. Prior to the curse. That's right. We don't have a curse. You can't be Christian on a curse. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then to, to Adam, no. To Adam, he said, this is verse 17. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and you have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. The ground became cursed now for yours because of what you did. In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, Till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For dust you are. And to dust you shall return. I don't even know if I'm going to get to reach where I want to reach tonight. Because there are some things here I want to really blow up for you. And it's fine. No, you can see here where the Bible says that Adam used to walk in the cool of the garden. Remember that? In the cool of the garden. If you are sweating in that cool, you, know, you, you need to go to the doctor. Right? So in the cooler garden, you're not sweating. It's cool. Amen. I just speak and eat and you're good. But no, after the curse, sweat now. Man starts, man starts both sweat for live now. A different ball game. And then you get to sweat with a groan which is cursed. So it is not yielding too much for you. Because there's a curse there. Have you ever noticed that at the workplaces, the big boss in him office with a desk big like the whole this building here. And his feet are on top of the desk and there's nothing on top there now. And the air condition is going. He doesn't sweat. He doesn't sweat. Mm -hmm. But outside there are some people are sweating hard. And guess what? Their return not so good enough. Ain't paid, ain't paid much. Well, ain't paid much. But the other one, that's curse. That's a curse. Well, now, <laughs> work with me now, going for a little fast. In the chapter 4, you see something developing now. Adam and Eve are having children. Right? And uh, clearly were taught by their parents, oh, they must make offerings to God. So Cain wanted to give God dashing and jackfruit and them foolishness. And God said, I don't want that. I don't want that. Because you know that the ground is cursed. So all you want to bring that cursed thing, come give me. The ground is cursed. Where are you bringing that to me for? And God said, I don't want it. But, but God accepted it. The other brother 
who came by blood brought some 